Welcome back to the QP Buckeye Insider from South Florida. Ohio State junior quarterback Braxton Miller. He watched all the bowl games. He saw the way quarterbacks, particularly Johnny Manziel, really electrified audiences. And he thinks tomorrow night against Taj Boyd, another electrifying quarterback, it'll be a chance for the Ohio State offense to really shine in the national spotlight. Of course, definitely. You know, that's what we came here for. I score a lot of points, you know. Um, show your talents, you know. you got to be prepared as well, too. So you got to be focused while you do it. Is it? Uh, is there some, some part of you personally that's excited to go, you know, you and Taj, two relief quarterbacks, obviously, in a game? Of, and you guys are the only show in town on Friday night. Oh, it's going to be fun to watch. I mean, it's going to be a lot of competition out on the field. And, you know, it's going to be competitive. That's what I like. It's a night game, too, and uh, it's going to be fun. Did you expect it? This is the Noah News. Does that surprise you? Did, were you guys kind of planning to go without him? Uh, we didn't know nothing about it, you know, until you know Coach Meyer approaches with it. And uh, he's a good, he's a good kid. You know, things happen at some type, you know, in life, and you gotta deal with it and just move on from it. Let's learn from it. Braxton, it's been a few weeks since you guys have been out there to play a game again. Uh, what's it like, you know, going so long without playing a game, especially after things didn't go your way the last time, and now you're about a day and a half away from being able to get back out there. Uh, you just gotta keep your eyes on the prize, you know. Just come out here every day and just work, and just uh, just, get, just make it like game day. You know, just gotta come out here like it's, it's game rep every time. You gotta go touch the field, and uh, gotta keep the guys going. Sometimes you know they get lazy at times, but you know you gotta pick them up. You know, as a leader I am, I just tell them let's keep going and let's, and let's go out there and just win this W, then we can have fun. Oh yeah, of course. You know, guys gotta get their legs back too as well, and um, you gotta make big plays, especially on the outside end. And, and um, just gotta. Just, you got to be ready and go out there and just show out. You know, it's going to be a night game and just have fun with it. The thing with bowl games, you have so much time to sit and think and watch tape and almost overanalyze, it seems. Uh, are are y'all sick of talking about it? I mean, and, and how do you avoid overanalyzing, just, just preparing and comfortably playing instead of just, you know, going crazy about things? Uh, you know, practice ties in with that, too. You know, just can't sit in the film room for, like, two hours. You don't get real bored with that. Mm -hmm. You don't lose focus, but you come out here and you just go, um, you know, hour and a half out here. That's gonna be much better than watching film. I feel like you know this physical preparation, you know, to see where the guys is on a actual field instead of on the board, and that's much better than watching film all day. Whatever you decide to Last do question. post bowl, or will it be a few days, or will it be a week or so? You know what I mean when you decide to make yeah. your phone make your mind? Uh, probably a week. I mean, a few days probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like Braxton Miller, Ryan Shazier perhaps facing a big decision in the coming weeks. Now, we've seen the linebacker from Florida wear three different numbers as an Ohio State Buckeye. Just one example of the way he has his heart on his sleeve. Ryan Shazier's dad, Vernon, is the Miami Dolphins team chaplain. Someday, perhaps maybe later this fall, Shazier could join his dad in the NFL. And he says growing up a preacher's kid has made all the difference in his life. Uh, it really impacted my life a lot uh, because my dad, uh, uh, I, I know uh, most dads want to lead you the wrong way, but I, my dad, I feel like, would never lead me the wrong way. And with him being a pastor, it really helps out a lot because uh, he, 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 uh, he knows the Bible pretty well. So when I need something uh, I'm going through, I can always talk to him about it. And, and he always sent me to the Lord. Uh, when, I, when, he, when he can't help me, he always sent me to the Lord. And, and that's always, my, always been my backbone. And, if I, I feel if I didn't have him as a, uh, as a father, I don't know what my life would be right now. Uh, so, The Florida native says he matured as a believer late in his teens. Uh, it, it, was, it was a really big moment. It was between like high school and college. Uh, I, was, I was still trying to find myself uh, because uh, when I was younger, sometimes you think you, you have to be it or, or they're making you be it. But when, once you get older, you really understand how much how much uh, you really, how, how really uh, important it is and how really close you have to get to them by yourself and not just through your parents. So I, 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 through, through that time, that's when it really helped me. Uh. Earlier this season, Shazier offered to go to Virginia with fellow linebacker Curtis Grant following Grant's father's passing away. His teammates certainly know about Shazier's servant heart. He's a great guy. Um, you know, he's one of those guys who's always trying to get the linebackers together, spend some time. So we've, we've got a really close bond because of that. Uh, you know, guy's got a big heart. And so anytime someone's down, he's looking to pick someone up. Um, and he's been a really good guy to get to know over the past couple of years. Uh, ever since I first came in, he was there to help me right along the way. So, uh, 
you know, he's one of those guys that I look up to definitely. They yeah, always, always try to help others because uh, our goal, our goal uh, on this world is to is to try to be like Christ and, and try to let others know about Him and 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 and. and and try to help others grow and, and become Christians and, 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 and make it to heaven also. And, I, and that's been my goal. I've been trying to uh, help impact people, not through football, not just through football, but through faith. And I've just been trying to help it, anybody I can when it comes to that. Shazier has a constant reminder of his favorite verse. Uh, I have a Philippians 4.13 tattooed on me, and it's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and, and I, I really believe in that. Uh, when, I always talk to the Lord, and whenever I have, when I need something, or I, I always know he has my back, and he'll always keep me strong through any adversity. Shazier isn't the only Buckeye who relies on his prayer life. When running back Carlos Hyde was suspended for the first three games this season, his faith and daily talks with the Lord strengthened and sustained him. My faith, my faith has uh, helped me a lot this year. You know, um, the time where I did get in trouble, you know, I just got, uh, I actually got closer to God during that time. You know, that was probably the person I talked to the most. You know, every night, you know, I just said a prayer to Him. You know, that He'd get me through this, and um, you know, and after He got me through, you know, I still, before every game, you know, I say a prayer, you know, to Him that. He beats with me uh, today during this game and uh, just let me shine. And so far, it's been so good. Switching gears now to the other side of the matchup with the Clemson Tigers. Dabo Sweeney also addressed the media. You heard Garrett Seawright's impressions earlier in tonight's show. We'll hear from Coach Sweeney now. You know, somebody was asking me that the other day. And, and uh, you know, listen, this is <laughs> it, it, it's hard to see a lot of advantages when you look at a football team that's 24 and 1. And, uh, you know, I mean, everybody, I think, is, is picking at, at different things. And, and, okay, obviously, if you just look at the statistics, you'd say, yeah, well, you know, they've, they, they've uh, not had the type of year they want defensively in the passing game. But, you know, a lot of it is people can't run the ball on them. Uh, so that's where the majority of their – any success that people have had have been in the passing game, and most people have been behind. And so they're having to throw the ball. So there's a little bit more. You know, sometimes that stuff can get a little skewed. Uh, they got some big old hogs up front that don't allow you to run the football very well. And uh, it's the bottom line. I mean, and I know they're losing a great player in, in eight. Uh, he, he's a great player. But, you know, this is game 14 for them. Uh, so it's not like they got a bunch of rookies out there. They, they, they play a lot of guys, just like we do. You know, if we lost a, one of our guys, I mean, yeah, you don't want to ever lose a great player, but, you know, we, we've got a lot of guys who've played all year and a lot of experience, and the Ohio State is a lot bigger than, than you know, one or two players. Um, and that's why they're 24-1. and one. I mean, that, that's, that's almost unheard of, to be honest with you, uh, in, in modern football, uh, for them to have that success. So, you know, these guys are incredibly confident, uh, as they should be, um, and I don't have any doubt that, that Coach Meyer will have them ready to go. Well, I mean, I expect them to, uh, you know, challenge us. Uh, they're a very physical bunch up front. Uh, I, I like their backers. You know, I think that number two, he makes about every he, – he he's makes plays all over the field. Uh, I mean, he's always around the ball. I think they will pressure us and, uh, and challenge us on the perimeter. You know, I think that they're confident in their guys. And, again uh, – you know, they, they have given up some plays and had some inconsistency, but I think that, you know, the fact that they've had 2,000-yard rushers and that, uh, you know, they, they have won most games pretty handily, uh, all that stuff is, is skewed in my opinion. It's a very good football team, a very good uh, defense, a complete team. And uh, you, don't, you don't luck up and go 24-1. and one. Need to take a break in this QP Buckeye Insider from South Florida. When we return, we'll catch up with the Lima News' Jim Naveau as he covers the Buckeyes here in South Florida.